Hello everyone, welcome to Chats with the Farmer's Daughter Fibers. I'm Candace of the Farmer's Daughter. I am the Farmer's Daughter. Um, I'm excited to be here, it's been a couple of weeks. Um, I'm having a really hard time figuring out where the frick I'm supposed to look. And I feel like I should be looking up here. Like if I look at the camera, which is down here, that, mean, that makes me look like I'm looking off like that. I'm just gonna look at myself, which is weird, but it makes me feel more comfortable. So if it, I don't know, maybe if I go like, maybe if I do that, maybe if I'm more in the middle. Oh, I think that just made it worse. I don't know. I don't think you guys care. I think really what you guys care about is that I'm funny and I tell entertaining stories and I show you all of the yarn. That's all that matters, right? Um, you guys did say you loved the chatting, which I'm so glad. I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm going an hour. This is so long, but I can't wrap it up into a half an hour. It just isn't gonna happen. I have too much to say. Also, the shop is open right now. So if I pause, I might have to pause and I might have to put things together or I might just have to close the shop and tell people to frick off because I'm doing a podcast. I'm not going to do that though. Um, I'm not going to tell anybody to frick off. Well, that's not true. There is some definite riff raff around here. Okay, this is funny. We got this sign that says wanted. Um, we, we borrowed this idea from another yarn shop. I'll post it on Instagram so you guys can see it. Um, but it's like wanted and then it's like somebody to feed me Doritos while I'm knitting so my fingers don't turn orange. And then at the bottom it says no weirdos. Obviously it's a funny joke. There has been some serious um, riffraff coming in of people really wanting to feed us Doritos. So, so there might be some riff raff. I might have to tell somebody to frick off and you guys are going to have to hear it on the podcast. Um, okay. Not that much chit chatting though. I will seriously get off on some weird tangents here. Um, but the comments have all been, no, We get a lot of, um, we get a, really a lot of spam and I know that that's a spam number. I'm not ignoring, I'm not ignoring you guys. Um, not ignoring our customers. First I'm telling people to frick off and then I'm just hanging up on people. Um, no, you guys, the comments, I, I know that you are, when you're commenting, you're, you know, um, entering to win for these, uh, prizes that we have but I the comments have been so sweet and so nice and so kind and it sounds like a lot of you are just like knitting away and listening to this so that's great um even my gam gam and pop pop are watching it and they're so cute they're putting it from their computer onto the big screen um which is I mean, so technology advanced. I don't even think I know how to do that. And they're not, Gam Gam's not a knitter though. And so I'm just, I, I didn't expect people outside of the knitting world to watch these. It's a little bit embarrassing. I don't love it, but I just have come to accept it. Um, I feel like Gam Gam might be taking some jello shots though before she's watching this because... How do you watch an entire hour of a knitting podcast sober if you don't knit? I don't know. Now she's going to be mad at me that I called her out, told the world about her jello shot addiction. So, um, it, you know, I love this platform because I think about it a lot. What I'm going to share, what I'm going to talk about, um, what you guys might be interested in. It's just, it's fun. It's a different creative way for me to kind of use this outlet. And it reminds me a lot of when I was little and I would do kitchen shows, like cooking shows and, or like sales shows. Me and my sister did a lot of that. And growing up on the ranch, my one sister's 14 years older than me. My brother's nine years older than me. And then my other sister's five years older than me. 
um, Courtney is my one that was five years older than me. And so we played together a lot, but also I was on my own playing pretend all, like all, all the time, especially when we had moved. We, you know, I grew up on the ranch and then my mom and sister and I had moved to um, Whitefish and I would come back and stay with my dad in the summers and vacations and stuff like that. And those are the times I really had to like dig deep into finding pretend play. I would like lived in an imaginary world and we had the big shop and the little shop. Um, we had a bunk house where we would have hired hands. A lot of time there were Hutterites um, who would run away from the colony and my dad would like let them stay in the bunkhouse and I'm sure they were drinking beer and doing things that Hutterites are not supposed to be doing. Um, if you don't know what a Hutterite is, they are of German descent and it's a lot like Amish, maybe not as strict as the Amish. Um, I know they don't go out and do like a, a, what is that called when they go and do like their little, you know, journey into the world and decide if the sinner's world is for them or not. They don't do that. Well, some of them did though. Um, so the bunkhouse and the Hooderites, and then there was the big barn and there was the chicken coop. I mean, it was just, you know, it's a ranch, it's laid out, it's big. And I had the four wheeler and the golf cart. Um, if I was in desperate need, I would sometimes take the John Deere um, tractor. No, it wasn't a tractor, it was a lawnmower. That was not, that wasn't one that I kind of got in trouble for that one. So, um, it was more of the golf cart was my first choice of vehicles, but I would just go around to, I mean, the, I had playhouses. My mom made me this beautiful, like Swedish playhouse. And that was really like what I did all the time is lived in an imaginary world. The playhouse was my house. The, I had another, um, playhouse. It wasn't a playhouse. It was like a, almost like a tree house. And that was my kitchen. That's where I made all of my mud tacos. And, but I would, every time I was doing something, I usually was like in front of like some sort of camera where I was like showing it off. So this just all feels very natural to me. Um, I was a weird, weird, weird kid. And I'm a weird adult and that's okay. It's all good. Um, I have been recently working a lot. We had a sale and so I was packing orders. I forgot, you know, I've done every job at FDF. Um, most of our employees don't even know how to hand wind skeins. I, that's all I did for years was hand wind skeins. But I love the, um, I love the shipping department. I forgot how much I hadn't done it for so long, like shipping things here and there, but for days of shipping, was so much fun. I didn't have to think about anything besides what was on the order. It was so therapeutic. It might be the best job at FDF. Um, so I'm still going to keep a couple days of shipping department time because I really enjoy that. So I didn't, I, I just, you know, you do these jobs for so long and you're like, I never want to do that again. I'm going to hire somebody. So I never have to do it again. But then you go back and realize, those were the good old days. Oh my gosh, I hope you guys can't hear my belly growling. I'm hungry. It's already almost 11 o'clock. Okay, gotta keep moving. Um, my kids are out of school. I love when they're out of school because they're home and it's just fun that they have more freedom and we're not gonna be doing much this summer. I'm gonna be working a lot and planting the seeds so I can relax a little bit next winter. Um, I have some fun ideas and just, I feel like this with FDF a lot, maybe as a business owner, you might feel this too of like, there's these moments of like, okay, we're plugging along, we're doing the thing, we're getting our systems down. And then it's almost like things are kind of starting to like bubble and I have all of these ideas and then, and then we do them and it's amazing. And it just feels like one of those times where like all these ideas are cultivating and we're getting ready and fall and winter, just making it really fun and amazing and trying to think of new ways to bring our brand and us to the world. So it's all good. I love my job. Um, I love, you know, speaking of like pretend play and always having when I was little, like a pretend you know, like I was going to go to the grocery store and then I'm going to go to home and I'm going to do it. Sometimes I honestly feel like my life right now is like that. Like it's a pretend 
life. Like, is this real? I come into my beautiful little yarn shop and to open the doors and get all my stuff ready to show you guys on my podcast. And it's just really sometimes too good to be true, it feels like. So thank you for that. Um, we went to the Mr. Sisters last night, the FDF girls, and they are a, um, a sisters. There was two last night. I think there might be three. They're not real sisters, but they're drag queens and they're amazing. And they did trivia and we almost won trivia. It was so fun. I suck. Uh, the team is amazing and they're very competitive. It was great. We were in first place the entire time and then we lost out. Um, I don't offer much to the team besides I bought dinner and I'm funny and I say things at my funny things at my own expense and everyone makes fun of me. And so that's what I bring to trivia night, um, which I feel like that's enough, right? Um, I don't have a great memory. As you can see on this podcast, I will be like, what was that? Oh shit. I forgot to look that one up. Um, so yeah. Mr. Sisters, so fun. Bingo, we need to get them here at FDF and do either bingo or I think they need to have like, I think they need to have a, a, we need to, we have a ladies night in November. I think the Mr. Sisters need to be here in front of the dolly wall for a photo booth, pictures with the Mr. Sisters and they can be funny and do their bit while they do that, right? I feel like that's a good idea. Okay. Um, Let's go on to what I'm sharing today. This is the Radical Toque. It is by Natalie and she is, I'm trying to like get it nice and close for you guys. I'm not trying to be weird. Um, True Grit Knits. And I love, I'm just like, I don't really know what this looks like on the camera. I'm trying to show you guys these beautiful cables. What I love about it is the cables and then I love the garter like accent. It's so simple, but ah, it's just so cute. I thought too, you know, um, Natalie was sweet enough to send this to me to show off. And um, I thought when I got it that I was like, oh, I'm definitely gonna, if I made this, I would wanna do more repeats of the cable but now that i have it on it's honestly it's a really cute perfect little i can tuck my ear so you can see my earring right there that's very cute i love that length um so the first week she did proceeds to sisters united which i thought was so sweet and i will everything is going to be linked on the show notes the show notes are just right below, I guess. And I'll also put them on Ravelry. Fiona said that she was gonna maybe do that and I haven't I haven't checked Ravelry. I'm not great at being a Ravelry person. Oh my gosh. Still spam, I think. If not, I'll call them back. Um, they can email. Email is really the best. As you can see, we're not great at answering our phone here. Just send an email and we can correspond back and forth. Um, I'm such a millennial in that where answering the phone is not my favorite mic like, or answering text messages. I will answer emails though. Okay, so this is made out of Pishkin and here is the Pishkin. And new labels. So excited. Okay, come on, buddy. There we go. Oh, yes. Okay, these are old labels. Love them. So cute. Hand grommeted. Come on. Um, the world is getting more expensive, and we are trying to figure out ways to cut costs. Um, these are very labor intensive. The grommets are not that cheap. And we just want to be able to not raise price of yarns. Eventually we will have to, but for right now we're doing pretty good with cutting costs, like things like this. Um, Jessalyn Starnes, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, created these labels for us. She does all of our beautiful pattern layout and she did a little upgrade of our logo. 
And okay, so I only have Pishkin. I can't wait to show you the rest because Odang has like a uh, alpaca on it and the um, this is the Rambouillet and the um, other ones have a Merino sheep on it. She did such an amazing job. I think that they are just so cute and so classy looking, right? Mm. And I love this palette. I stole it from the dye studio. I think it's for a shop. Use these, all of these. Please don't come in here. Thank you, sir. It was just a looky loo, just a guy, and he just wants to come in and talk about the farmer's daughter. Are you the farmer's daughter? So let me guess, are you a farmer's daughter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should write all the stupid shit that men say. Look what the cat drug in. Um. <laughs> Okay, anyways, uh, yeah, love the labels. I'm so excited. So those, these were just like the first batch we got to, to look at them, make sure that everything was correct on them. So the new batch, the whole kitten caboodle should be coming in this Friday, I'm hoping, maybe early next week. So you will start seeing these labels, but it will take us a while to get through everything because we have such a nice plump backstock that these guys will be in stock for a little bit longer. And no more hang tags. Booyah, I love these though. I designed these. These are the first tags of FDF. Actually, that's not true. The first tags of FDF were a bookmark like this, but you know what I did? I hand did rivets on every single one. Insane. I did it like by hand like this. I mean, even this is crazy. I gotta be honest, Michaela does it. She's such a great sport to be doing thousands of rivets, riveted labels. Um, tens of thousands, honestly. So it will be nice. Michaela will be able to free up some of her time to work on other things like the indigenous collective and all of that stuff. Um, okay, next thing I wanna show you guys is the new pom-pom. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this. You just need to get it and see it for yourself. This sweater right here, I'm gonna get a sample made. I freaking love it, it's so cool. And we have a pattern, well, we don't have a pattern in here, but um, our yarn was used for a beautiful crochet pattern. Um, the designer is Yin Yang Kim, I hope I, I'm sorry if I, if I really screwed that up. Um, and it's in Boxy Lady and Squish Fingering. Boop. Oh my gosh, how beautiful is that? And the model, it's too good. So this is a really pretty crochet pattern. I'm sorry, I don't crochet, so I can't tell you like details on how it's made. Actually, Allison, one of our, um, employees is going to do it. But I need we need a sample on that in Juicy DK, right? Also this one, I also love this other model. Stunning, beautiful. Great representation in pom pom as always. Mm. There's just like this this sweater it's isn't it funny it's both sides it's their 10th anniversary so happy anniversary pom-pom congratulations uh this sweater and look at those just like that detailing up there simple beautiful stunning Rhinebeck sweater maybe actually I have a different well I don't know I'm gonna get to that I'm gonna get to, I'm, I was thinking about doing a little summer knit along, getting ready for fall. It doesn't necessarily have to be a Rhinebeck sweater, but I'm just thinking about these things. Um, so yeah, you guys need this. It's so good. It also smells good too. Um, new merch. I'm so excited to show you guys my knitting libations and good vibrations. I always like to get like new shirts and new merch for summer. These are these cute little crop tops. I'm usually a medium and I'm wearing a large. So size up. Um, I tried to get the largest sizes that I could. I'm going to tell you guys that it is so hard to procure 
anything right now. So I did the best I could and I'm gonna keep doing better and I'm gonna get larger sizes in the crops as soon as I can. Okay, so knitting libations and good vibrations come in a crop in gray or in this beautiful marigold. And we also have another saying that says weaving water and weed. Oh yeah, baby. I was going to do weaving whiskey and weed, but then some people don't drink and they might still partake in marijuana use. I also wanted to do weaving Waylon in weed because I love Waylon. I know you guys think I love Willie. I do love Willie, but I love Waylon. Yes, I would take Waylon over Willie. I know. It's sacrilegious to say that. But then I was like, okay, who weaves, loves Wayland, and smokes weed? I mean, tell me, how many people are gonna be buying that? Water, everybody loves water. Water is life, water is important. So, both of these, the knitting and the weaving come in gray and marigold. They also are coming in these sweatshirts. We have Vicky back here and she is, um, modeling the sweatshirt it's backwards we can't focus and that one you can see is oh for cripe's sake is long it's going to cover your usi and you can crop it though if you don't like that length i wanted i try to make something for everybody some people like cropped some people like long but if you wanted to crop this janet um, who works for Magpie Fiber. She's an amazing sewing designer. She just showed on her Instagram, I'm going to link it to the show notes, um, of how to crop your shirts or sweatshirts and stuff like that. I mean, it's easy, but it's just nice to see it in like such a professional, beautiful form. So, um, I'll link that. So those are our new shirts. I'm so excited. Okay. Today's the 7th of June. I'll probably post this on the 8th because I'm hoping to get it all up. Oh, oh, somebody's here. I think it's Xander. He's trying to get in the back door. Oh, great. We are going to, okay, sorry guys. If you are here, the door is locked and I am working on a podcast in the front of the store. Period. Okay. This better not, Xander better not interrupt my podcast. Um, okay, other new merch that we have. These super cute. Mm -hmm. My neighbors are looking at me like I'm crazy right now. I could be on a Zoom, right? Mm. How cute are those? There are these iced coffee, iced water iced whatever glasses the fdf one um i love this logo jill zelinski made that for us last year this is like a frosted glass and because the logo just wasn't showing up that great on the clear glass there is also this cute little flower one if you don't want something branded yeah, come on mm -hmm. you can't see it that well there we go and then there's this mountain one. Just simple, cute. You could really see, gosh, can't you just see a beautiful, juicy margarita in this one? Oh yeah. And then I love this one. It's moon and mountains and stars. It reminds me of, reminds me of like the west side of Glacier National Park for some reason. And then we have another branded wine glass wine cup wine mug with a lid on it for all of your to-go wine pleasure or coffee or tea or soda water and bitters and lime i don't know whatever your whatever your heart desires then this cute little montana coffee mug there we go there we go and then i love this montana one we just we kind of get these for like our tourists obviously they're online too so if you need some montana love there you go. What the heck is going on here? More ghosts. There we 
we go. Okay, I'm just gonna check my check my message real quick. If you were here, the door is locked. Maybe it was somebody else. Maybe it was some riffraff and somebody was trying to get in the back. Good thing I kept the door locked. Okay. <gasps> no. Um, we seriously get so many spam calls. Somebody sold us out. Okay. Let me just make sure it is spam. Spam risk. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, new merch. Okay, weaving. I've been I've been knitting a little bit. Um, I realized Mr. Sisters last night after my cocktail, I did too many increases and this hat's a little bit too long, so I gotta go back. But you guys have seen this. It's boring and I love it. Um, cowgirl crop is on the schedule for this week of me doing. Oh, I don't know I would keep saying that, but really it is. Um, I had to get into the world of weaving because I did a weaving workshop last weekend. So I started a new weaving on my big loom. I'm really excited. Maybe I'll post some pictures on Instagram stories or even my grid or something like that. I don't know. Um, but we did our weaving last weekend and we use these 20 inch Becca looms. I freaking love these looms. They're so nice. They're $75, so they're pretty affordable, especially if you get in that point system. It's really nice. Um, I love it because I love the teeth. Let's see here. Yeah, I love these plastic teeth. They hold my warp yarn so well. And this is actually really portable. I take this whenever I go on any sort of like travel vacation trip or anything like that because I love weaving on vacation. It's just so relaxing. That's why I love weaving because it's so meditative. You can get really lost in it. It's one of those crafts that I feel like if you are doing that, like almost it will start telling you what to do. Like the fibers, what to use, how to go with it, all of those things. Especially after you get the, the basic techniques down. I will say that the tabby weave, which is just like a straight plain weave, if you, if you get your tension right on doing that, then you can do anything. Weaving is so easy and all you need is Freaking Pinterest is the best resource for weaving. Another amazing resource is Mary Ann Moody. Um, and I just did, I when I, okay, sorry. I just totally um, ADD'd out there really quick. I'm gonna share with you Mary Ann Moody's new book, but I just wanted to tell you before I sit this down, um, I just did some Raya knots here, which is the fringe and some tabby. And then these are called loops. And I weave along with my, um, when I'm teaching a class, I usually weave at the same time so I can show them techniques as we go and they, you know, I can actually create something too or I'm not just doing techniques on like a random weaving. Um, we can go in order together. So this is Marianne Moody's new book. Um, I love her. First of all, she's from Australia and she just has the most amazing voice. So her tutorials, she has online tutorials. That's how I learned how to weave on a small little loom. If I was, and I tell people this and it's, I, I promise I'm not trying to be like gross and salesy. These Becca looms, the 20 inch ones are perfect for beginner weavers. If you get something small, you're gonna want something bigger almost immediately for $75. Those ones are like 25 to 45. Just get the, get the good one. You'll, it's so versatile. Um, we also have 36 inch ones that are big, the bigger like floor looms. Um, not a traditional floor loom. It's still almost like kind of this Navajo style where you are warping just back and forth. Um, so yeah, I just, I really think that that's the way to go. Um, and her tutorials are on a smaller one, but it doesn't matter. So this is her brand new book, Modern Weave. Um, she has another book too. I will say I love this one a lot more because she talks about, um, she talks a lot about color. 
design, um, different fibers that you can use. I'll show you guys some fibers today that we have here that I really love. Different looms, um, different tools, and then you know, she talks about basic tabby a lot in here. And this is really what you need to know is this basic tabby. And it's like a, a bubble technique. Um, it's too hard to explain without showing you. I will show you someday though. I'm thinking about doing some classes. I have a whole, I have this whole idea that's been ruminating about being on a platform where I can sh have different, like if you're into weaving, you could do weaving classes. We could do the indigenous collective on there. Um, all kinds of different things. I'm sure you could guess what platform I'm talking about, but I'm still in the thinking stages. So, um, anyways, and then you can go through and like do actual, you know, projects that she will you know, you can copy these. She has these on here, so you can make the exact one. Oh, look at how catty that rainbow loom is. So, all kinds of things. I just love this book. Um, I love this. I wanna do something like that. So I'll just show you some things that we have here. If you're interested in weaving, or maybe you have a loom, you're not sure where to start, Marianne Moody, I always recommend that. Um, take one of our classes if you can. I'm going to do one in August. I'm going to do one in probably like another one in the fall, whether that's September, November, December. I haven't gotten my dates down yet. Um, just do it though. I mean, it's not, it's one of those things you can use so much of your scrap yarn. Um, I am going to show you some fun yarns that you can use. Anything bulky, I love to use. Anything that is a roving, like actual roving, or resembles roving in the in in that way where it's not heavily plied. So this Loopy Mango number five is one of my favorites. Um, right there. It is like this really nice um, roving with a, a cotton like twist on it. If you were gonna unwind this, it is almost just like a pencil, really thin pencil roving. I love it for tabby because it will squish it down really nicely. Um, you can kind of see right here, my couple rows of tabby with it up top there. Um, this is a little bit like of a looser tabby. I could have gone um, tighter on it, but I didn't want to. I like that little bubbly effect. And then also I used it for my fringe and I love how it turns out in fringe because it's kind of ruffly. It gives it more texture than just straight down. Um, so, and we have quite a few colors of the Loopy Mango. This is one of my favorite weaving yarns. And then this Glacier Super, Glacier, Glacial, Glacial, Super Chunky. Um, we dye this at FDF. This is like our big chunky yarn. This is amazing for big texture, for sumac, which are those like big, beautiful braids. Um, and the colors of this turn out really pretty, especially the speckles. So this is a really fun one. Again, it's Glacial Super, Glacial, why can't I freaking say that? Glacial super chunky. Glacial super chunky. All right, um, <laughs> moving on. This stuff I have yet to use, but I'm going to use it in this weaving that I'm working on with class. It's a recycled cotton braid, and this is by um, Macrame by JM. This stuff would be really great, again, for sumac, Oh man, I think that a Egyptian knot would be really cool. Pinterest is such a good place for weaving. You can look up Farmer's Daughter Fibers and one of our saved, um, one of our saved like boards is weaving. And I've just posted or saved a ton of different weavings that I love. But there are so many people that have free videos, um, lots, so. It's a really, really, really great free resource. 
Um, I like using recycled cotton string. It's not your traditional macrame string that is really like tightly wound together. This is this really nice string that, oh yeah, at the ends of it are really loose and so it's not tightly plied. So you can actually take a cat brush and you can brush it all out, um, which is awesome. And then I love adding different fibers that have like just big texture. So this recycled fuzz, recycled frizz ribbon is what it's called, but it's just this nice like fuzzy ribbon yarn. Um, that was also on my weaving as well. And then one of my absolute favorites to use is Steg Bulky. It's a single ply that we dye. Oh, just look at how beautiful those speckles are. Two Medicine, this is great to knit with too, um, but I love it for weaving because it is a single ply, so it does that really nice like roving texture in there. And then things like this, like this ribbon that we have, really beautiful way to add some extra texture and difference into these big chunky weavings, I guess is more what I'm talking about. Um, <coughs> my gosh, my throat just got really dry. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people walking by. Um, what else do I want to say about weaving? So much. I think that, again, get to a class if we can, if you can. Um, Marianne Moody's books, any resource from her is great. And then watch out for hopefully some videos from us on doing more online techniques and really doing some more teaching style stuff. So hopefully, hopefully soon, but maybe not till January. We'll see. Okay, what else? <laughs> Let me look at my little list. I think that, oh man, I think that we're kind of getting towards the end. I got about 20 minutes left. Perfect amount of time as long as nobody interrupts us. Okay, so Mr. Pocket, when I was doing um, all of the uh, shipping, I noticed how Mr. Pocket was flying out the door and it's also one of those colors I get the most questions about. Is it green? Is it gray? Why does it look different on O'Day and then it looks different on Squish Fingering? And it is very different. I'm just gonna hold up all of them really quick. I'll go through and show you all of them, but you can really see the difference of all of the bases. On Mr. Pocket. Mr. Pocket comes the name Mr. Pocket. Did I talk about this already? I've talked about it at some point. I don't think I talked about it in my first episode. Mr. Pocket is from The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. It's a Coen Brothers movie. Um, that short film, it's like a bunch of short films and Mr. Pocket was my favorite. I love it. I want to rewatch it actually. Um, but it's very, very funny. Some of them are sad, some are funny, some are very gory. It's just all Western, um, really great. So Mr. Pocket, this is on Juicy DK and um, Squish Fingering. And you can, they're very similar. They're both 100% superwash. Juicy DK's colors and Squish Fingering. Um, Juicy DK is just uh, obviously heavier weight. It really is, closer to a sport weight than a DK weight. Um, um, it's a light DK and Pishkin is a heavy DK light worsted. It's hard to call things, you know, a certain weight sometimes. And even I don't give gauge um, suggestions because it's so different. It depends on the person. It depends on the project. It just is too hard to like narrow that down. So um, Juicy DK though starts or it it dies up so beautifully. Whenever we test colors, we usually test it on Juicy just because it it's so it just turns out so lush and bright and vibrant. Um, 
So if you want like kind of the true Mr. Pocket, I would do it on one of the non-super wash or one of the super washes like Miss, like, oh my God, like Juicy DK or Squish Fingering. This is the time that if I was gonna edit these things, I would edit this out. Um, I'm really trying to think too, who the heck was just trying to get in the back when I thought Xander was back there? I hear a lot of footsteps, but those are just our landlords. Um, okay, sorry. Again, ADD brain. If you want the true Mr. Pocket, get it on Juicy DK. It is a gray, green, more green combo. But if you get it on something like, it's just not going to show. There we go. Come on. Come on, buddy. Now you can see it. it. Looks good with my orange nails. Um, if you want it on something like Sukapi or Odang or Mighty Mo, it's gonna be more of this really cool. It's not gray. It's not green. It's I don't know what. It's not brown. Uh, Mighty Mo is definitely more green. Oh, this has got to be so annoying to watch me try to focus this. But you can see it on Knit Up. This is the Ingle sweater. It's by Caitlin Hunter. This is Mr. Pocket down here. So you can really see. So people will see it and then they'll order the oh dang. Or even in Caitlin's um, pictures, it does turn out more green in the pictures than it is more green gray in the skein and sometimes people are surprised by how it looks this sweater is probably my one of my favorite sweaters just the oh dang is amazing it's amazing to wear um oh i'm gonna sneeze <coughs> i'm gonna sneeze again I sneeze once, I sneeze at least 10 times. I have fibers in my nose this morning. Um, it's so soft. It's I just wear, like usually with a little bralette, I try to wear the less clothes underneath it the possible because it feels so good. It you, it like literally changes your mood when you're wearing it. You're, it's like wearing a little cloud around. Um, and this is Miniyoki here. Pretty Shield and Paul Newman. And my version is in Noppy, so it's like opposite, it's light. And it's just, I really, I can't say enough great things about this sweater. One thing I will say is swatch, 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 swatch for the sweater. You probably are gonna have to go up a lot of needle sizes. Caitlin did this on a six. Most people I think do it like on a nine. Um, so that is my one recommendation for this. And you know, using, I know people are afraid to use Odang oh and Mighty Mo, and especially single. It's not that bad. It's it it really isn't. Um, especially Odang. Oh it's a little bit fuzzier. It's not quite as sticky. Um, if you're scared, put some lifelines in. Uh, f freeze it. Freeze your um, freeze your your project if you have to rip it out. That way, it just comes out a lot more nicely it's not sticking together as much that is a really good suggestion for that so i just wanted to show you guys my one of my favorite sweaters to wear i probably will say that for every sweater but it's true i have lots of favorites oh and i just grabbed some i'm just going to show you with juicy dk i grabbed some spin cycle that i thought would go well of course ghost ranch because Ghost Ranch goes good with everything. Um, Grumpy Birds goes really nicely. Oh, every rose, I mean, come on. This new colorway is just gorgeous. It has browns, like almost like mauvey browns, peaches, pinks, teals, yellows. It goes real good with this. Well, Lolo, of course. 
and then kind of getting into the dream state miss me pretty similar i mean you're seeing more greens in the camera than i think if you if you've got it it's lighter it goes trust me mississippi marsala oh yeah okay but here's the showstopper folks freaking slow burn um yeah i want those and what i'm thinking and i kind of mentioned this before is that about a knit along and doing starting like in july and getting our sweaters ready but what if we did a steak along and we did sweaters that we steak we could we'll do it here in the shop but then we could also do it virtually we wouldn't do much virtually besides like our form on Ravelry, but then we could do like a steaking tutorial live Zoom. Yeah, a steaking Zoom where we could cut it and then you could see. Would we choose one particular pattern or do you get to choose any pattern that you want? I think that's it. It's like an independent steak along with us there to guide you. I, 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 this is where I think that I'm going with this. I gotta decide soon though, if we're gonna do this, but I'm not gonna be able to do Juicy DK because I need to do a super wash, a non-super wash, I'm sorry. Oh, recollect. Okay, I'm gonna tell you guys a secret. We're getting recollect. We don't do recollect in Mr. Pocket. Recollect is a brown, it's a gray yarn, sorry. Um, it's a gray yarn, so Mr. Pocket doesn't really work, the colors work well. There's a lot of colors on Recollect that don't work. So we are getting white, Recollect. It's not gonna be called Re Recollect. Reminisce, maybe? Reminisce on the white base, and it, I could use that with the slow burn. Mm. Okay. New yarn, new sweaters, steaking. What do you guys think? Tell me. Um, I could do Mr. Pocket on that. And I just had another thought and I lost it. Okay. I think, I, I think that's it though. I think that's, I think that's what we should do, right? Not all of our colors work on Recollect and we're like, oh, we just love that yarn and the ply so much. Like we need to make this a thing. You know, there's there's a lot of them that don't work on there. So, oh, many moons. And um, come and get your love. Have you guys seen that? I think I showed it last time. It's that beautiful blue color. We need that on Recollect. We can't just put Recollect in a box. Nobody puts Recollect in a corner. So that's what we need to do. Okay. Um, what else? Angle sweater I wanted to show you guys. Mr. Pocket. Indigenous Collective is going to be so freaking good. You guys need to sign up. June, you got to sign up by like, I mean, if I put this out today, you got till tomorrow to sign up. Otherwise, you get kicked to July. I'm not making these colors again. I, 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 it. It's so good. And this is the thing, this is why it's so good, is because we chose this painting, this, I think it's a digital actually painting, um, of this beautiful indigenous artist. And when we chose it, obviously, you know, we're gonna choose the colors out of there that we like and what we're inspired by, but really what I, and this is what I love about dyeing yarn, and how Farmer's Daughter Fibers embraces it is that it became something else. The inspiration wasn't about just the colors, it was about the, the person that is in this painting, this portrait, I will give you that. Um, and it's about invoking the feeling of the art. It's not just like copy and pasting these colors. It's so much more than that. And I really hope to articulate that through our blog and in our process. 
um, of how we dyed the colors and why we chose the picture that we chose. So I just, I want everybody to see it and be involved in it. Um, you guys gotta sign up. June is so good. It's, I'm very excited. I worked on it all day yesterday and you guys are gonna love it if you're already signed up. Um, we talked about the knit along that I'm, you know, now, now that this new recollect, I got to see when this recollect can come in. Like, let's get it out there. Let's get it out. I don't know. How long do you guys need for, an, I need like five months to finish a sweater, but maybe if we started, maybe if we could get recollect, um, uh, reminisce, I think we might call it reminisce. I like that. There was another word too that we were thinking of, but rem I'm remembering reminisce, so that should probably be it. If we do that by like the beginning of July, and then if we started the knit along in mid July, and then we finished it by mid October, that's like one, two, that's almost three months. That, okay, I like that timeline. I'm glad we could work this out. Let's do it, steak on. Okay, but the this is actually what I was gonna say when I had lost my thought. I really like the Sheep Camp sweater by Jen Berg, and what if I steaked it? Be good. You know who's a steaking and sweater making freaking phenomenon is Rachel Price from Spin Cycle. The um the mind behind Spin Cycle. You guys gotta look at her stuff. And she also started doing these new get ready with me videos. Follow her personal account. I think it's Side Eye Witness. At Side Eye Witness. You guys gotta you guys gotta see her brilliance. So I'm gonna take some inspiration from her, is what I'm saying. We can all take inspiration from her. Um, this Saturday, moving right along, this Saturday is Worldwide Knit in Public Day. Um, and I'm very excited about it because Worldwide Knit in Public Day was one of my first like knitting events that I did. I just started knitting. I started knitting in like January of 2009. And in June of 2009, I got to go to Worldwide Knit in Public Day at Camas Creek, downtown Kalispell, Montana. They had the most lovely shop. I think it's still open, but it's not yarn the gal who originally had it maybe some yarn some embroidery some like stuff like that i'm not 100 percent sure it's been a while i don't did she make it through the pandemic i don't know um but the first owners of camas creek it was just god the most beautiful stunning amazing yarn shop and they just had so many cool events i feel like i probably like that was such a great introduction to good first yarn shops and inspiration for me now. Anyways, we all knit in public. It's not a big deal, but it's fun to make it intentional. Last year we had a pedlet and we had a landscaping company come and they like put out grass and all of their like furniture and stuff like that. It was really fun. Now our knitting group is getting bigger and bigger and we just didn't have enough room to do that. I am gonna do the pedlet again this summer but just at a different time. So we were just gonna go to farmer's market and like have a little picnic and sit and knit there. But then all the gals at Stitch and Bitch wanted to do a pub crawl. So now we're doing a pub crawl. If you go on Facebook, you can see all the places we're going and it's gonna be fun, I'm excited. Um, that's this Saturday. But if you aren't in Great Falls, if you can't make it to the pub crawl, just make sure you go out and knit in public for a while. Celebrate our craft. Um, it's important that people know how freaking cool we are, right? Okay, giveaway. So two things. One, the giveaway is um, is going to, the, the last two giveaways, I I didn't pull one from last episode because I wanted just to record. I'll do that and I will comment. The first episode, the person never replied. They must not be on YouTube much. So I deleted my comment because you only have so much time to claim your prize. I'm gonna say like two weeks, like by the time I am getting ready to do the next episode is when you do it. So maybe turn on your notifications for FDF podcasts. Um, so then if you win, you can see you have to comment and you have to subscribe. And so I have two previous ones to draw again. 
And then this one, I was thinking, let's do, how about we do three skeins of um, Mr. Pocket in whatever base that you want, you get to choose. And then how about, you can either choose from one of our t-shirts or a sweatshirt or a mug, a coffee. So you have three choices on your sweatshirt, um, well, your sweatshirt, shirt, or coffee mug, and you can do the knitting one or you can do the weaving one, and then three skeins of Juicy DK. I love giveaways. Um, so comment, subscribe, like, share, share with your friends. Okay. I think that's it. Oh, we wrapped it up. We're under an hour. We're doing good. I don't think I said um five million times. Uh, eye contact on the camera. I'm not really sure. Well, as soon as I get a production manager, then he can help us with that. Or she. We're not really getting one. But Okay, bye guys. I hope you have a great week and I will see you around.